everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Angel Azara and I'm a professional opera singer and voice teacher and today I'm reacting by request to Luis Miguel's La Incondicional. I'm really looking forward to this analysis because when I reacted to La Bikina, there was a lot of beauty in his tone, like clearly he has a very powerful voice and a very powerful stage presence, but there was just something I don't want to say something missing from the performance because it was a complete performance unto itself, but I just knew that there was more he could do. Like I just knew that he was holding back, that it was easy for him. So I'm looking forward to this. You all said that it would have the brightness that I was wanting to hear, that it was going to have the higher register that I wanted to hear. So I'm ready to hear it. Let's get started. Misma siempre tú, amistad, ternura que se yo, tú, mis horas bajas, tú, un cuerpo de mujer, un par de rosas blancas. So I can already tell, I mean, of course, it's a completely different song than La Bikina. Hello, it's totally different. But I can see that he's starting from a much more relaxed place, not only because he's not roaming around the stage, but because his whole face is utterly, utterly relaxed. It looks like he just woke up from a nap. His his cheek muscles, his entire facial, facial musculature is so relaxed that even his lower lip is relaxed. That's more relaxed than most of our resting faces are. So for him to be in such a place at the beginning of a song in a concert is really impressive. Just to have that level of lax, laxity, is that a word? To have that level of lack of a lax musculature in his face is impressive. Laxity. I don't know if that's a word or not. Let's keep going. <laughs> There's what I was looking for. I was looking for that belt. I knew it was there, but it just, it wasn't in Bikina. It just wasn't written in La Bikina. It's so nice to hear. It's so nice to see that his face is in a great position for belting. He's got this wide smile in his upper teeth and his upper lip is curled above. But his lower lip isn't jutting out in any way. I'm not really seeing his bottom teeth, except for the fact that he just naturally has a wide smile. But I'm not seeing him pulling his lip down at all, which is a perfect place to be in for a belt like this. And the brightness in his voice is so beautiful. It's such a balanced sound. I really understand the sun nickname now. So I'm hearing, again, it's just a really balanced sound, but it's so important to me how relaxed his face is, how relaxed his face is, because all of this needs to be engaged when you're belting, but none of this should really ever be engaged. It's kind of the one thing that belting and classical music have in common is that the jaw shouldn't really be doing much. It should just be down because of gravity. Another great thing that I'm noticing is that I'm not noticing his breaths. I'm not noticing them at all. They're silent as they should be. A lot of singers will cheat. 
dun, dun, da, 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 da. And they'll take a really loud, high, audible breath, but they'll pull the mic away so that we can't hear it. He's not doing that. He's not doing any sort of pulling away. If he's pulling away, it's because he's already singing and it's a loud note and he's trying to balance out the sound. He's not pulling away for his breath. So that tells me that he has an inaudible breath that's low and supported, which is exactly what he needs to sound this great. I love that he can go back from the higher belt where he is really engaging his face muscles to the la da 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 super, super relaxed musculature for the lower notes where he doesn't really need to do much of anything except sound beautiful, which he does. Um, and another thing that I'm seeing is that as he belts higher, he's tilting his neck up. I know I talk about this a lot, but it really is so important. Belt and classical are not the same in laryngeal position. The larynx needs to be higher for a belt than, than the sort of extra depressed maybe not extra depressed, but the depressed larynx you get when you're singing classically. And he's alleviating that tension when you sing like this. Ah, my larynx is being depressed by my hyoid bone, which sort of suspends above it. He's alleviating that depression by tilting up so that his hyoid bone doesn't push down on the larynx. La, da, 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 da. And it's Perfect. He's just adjusting as singers need to do. And you can kind of hear him going into that Americanized -da -da -da, and it gets really wide. I think it sounds great. It, it's kind of got that 90s pop vibe to it. And it's, he's just adjusting. It's just a different color that he's using now that he's like scatting along with the instruments. Um, it's not a technical thing, just an observation that he's using another color choice by widening his vowels and by slightly widening his mouth. So when he's doing a solo, a solo, you hear that little uh, uh, uh at the beginning of the note. It's called a coupe de glotte, and it just is a different type of onset from a balanced onset where just before um, air begins to come through the chords, the chords close together. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, when I'm working with my students, I'll tell them to sound like the Count from Sesame Street. One, ah, 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 two, ah, ah, ah. That's a coupe de glotte. He's been using a lot of balanced onset, which is where breath and the chords begin to work together simultaneously. And then my favorite ukulele girls who have a breathy onset and everything they sing starts with air and it's really fine as a color choice, but it gets irritating when it's all the time. But he's using that coupe de glotte to help cinch his chords up while he's singing these higher notes. And it's it's a great, great use of the coupe de glotte. Um, and it sounds good, obviously. I mean, what more can I say about how good he sounds? <laughs> And 
and he did it right there. Ah! That heavy glottal attack. And it gets him right up into that place. It's obviously a much different place for my voice, but um, it sounds, it's perfect. It's the perfect time to use a glottal stroke like that. And this isn't really so much, um, I mean, it, it, it's a technical analysis, but the yeah, yeah, and the na nas, both are also really great ways to make sure that everything is lined up. Uh, n, n, n is a voiced consonant, which means you can sing a pitch on it. So na, 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 na is a really, really great way to make sure that you have a balanced onset, not a glottal onset. So he's sort of switching between the two and yeah yeah the yeah that sort of like slide from a closed e vowel into the open eh americanized open e vowel is another great way to kind of make sure just make sureing that making sure that everything is lined up make sureing what I've been talking all day, you guys. I'm sorry. I've been teaching all day, so my brain's fried. But everything he's doing, even though it just sounds easy for him, and it is easy for him, but he's using these musicians' tools to make it easy for himself. Another small comment uh, that I have is just look at how relaxed his tongue is. His tongue is totally relaxed in his mouth while he's belting away and doing all of these pop runs and nothing's happening. Like his mouth is kind of just in one position. There's a little bit of jaw articulation for pitch, um, which in the classical world isn't my favorite thing, but in the pop world, musical theater world, it's pretty common and it usually isn't symptomatic of extreme jaw tension like it is for when you're singing classically. Different techniques. But his mouth is, his jaw is relaxed. It articulated, it articulates pitch slightly and his tongue is just flat and wide in his mouth. Phrasing. But that's the perfect position it, for it to be in while he's doing these runs and he's singing in this register. Amiga, solo, solo tú. <laughs> All right, with that breath, come through with those long notes. Okay, so you were all 100% correct. I needed to listen to La Incondicional, like for the good of my soul. And he gave me everything that I wanted to hear. And that's the best part. And again, like I don't know Luis Miguel that well. I have not been following his career forever. Um, I definitely am going to now. I'm coming 40 years late to the game, which is insane. But I'm on, I'm on it now. But the best thing about him for me is that I listened to La Bikina and I analyzed it, which isn't really the most pleasant way to listen to a song for the first time because you have to be thinking about, you know, like doctoral level mumbo jumbo. But despite the fact that I was listening to analyze, I enjoyed the performance a lot. 
and I wanted to hear more, which isn't always the case when I am like adjudicating competitions or um, sitting in on concerts. I don't always want to hear more from a singer. I can think that they're great and be like, that's done now. But with him, I was like, wow, La Bikina sounds so good. I know that there's more colors in his voices. I know there's more range in his voice and I want to hear it. So again, thank you so, so much for recommending this to me. If you have more recommendations, um, I'm thinking about doing Pensad NT next from him. And there's also more Latin singers coming that I'm really, really looking forward to. But for now, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video informational or helpful at all, please like and subscribe. Smack that notification bell so that you can get updates on when I'm doing another Luis Miguel video. And toy, toy, toy until next time.